Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today we're diving into something super important for making sure all students have the same opportunities to learn. Yeah, making sure every student has a level playing field to learn and grow. We're talking about Accessible Educational Materials, or AEM for short. That's right, and you've given us a really helpful guide and some real-life stories to work with. It seems like you're really interested in moving from the what of AEM to the how. Yeah, the... exactly. I mean, we know it's important, but how do we actually make it happen in the classroom? That's what we're here to uncover. So let's start by unpacking this acronym, AEM. Imagine a student who can't physically hold a textbook or even understand the words on the page. What then? That's where AEM steps in. It's all about giving students those core learning materials, but in formats that actually work for them. Things like digital text braille, audio, even tactile graphics for those who learn best by touch. I like how this Oregon AEM guide you shared puts it, turning learning barriers into learning opportunities. It's spot on. And it ties in perfectly with FAPE, you know, that legal requirement for a free and appropriate public education for all students. Right. AEM is a key part of that. Yeah. We're talking about fairness, access, and legal responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So for the educators listening, how can you tell when a student needs AEM? This guide mentions struggling to keep up with their classmates. Yeah, that's a big one. But it's not just about grades. It's about noticing if a student is constantly getting frustrated with those standard learning materials. Do they seem to come alive when the information is presented in a different way, like maybe through audio or visual aids? It's like that light bulb moment when something finally clicks. This guide even points out specific behaviors to look for, like, difficulty concentrating on printed text or maybe struggling with the fine motor skills that are needed to use traditional books. And this is key. AEM isn't limited to a specific disability category or anything like that. It's all about what each individual student needs. So things like observations, assessments, and really talking with the student and their family are so important. It's a personalized approach. I love it. So you figured out that a student needs AEM. How do you even begin to choose the right format for them? There are so many options. Oh, there are. This guide emphasizes collaboration big time. It's about giving the student the space to try different formats and see what clicks best for them. Maybe it's digital text with text to speech or a blend of different approaches. Finding that sweet spot for each student. I see this guide also talks about something called the AEM Navigator. Oh, it's an awesome tool. It's an assessment tool designed to match students with the AEM options that best fit their learning style and their needs. That makes so much sense. Hmm. So it's not just as simple as handing a student an iPad and saying, go for it. Implementation seems really important, too. Absolutely. Training is key both for the students and the teachers. We want to make sure everyone feels confident and comfortable actually using these tools. Hmm. Remember, AEM isn't just about the tech itself. It's about how you weave it into the learning experience. You got it. Speaking of weaving it in, this guy talks about something called Factor G in the IEP. Can you tell us more about that? Think of Factor G as the official stamp of recognition that says, this student needs AEM. It's a core part of IDEA, the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, and it makes sure that providing AEM is a major consideration in every single IEP meeting. So it's not just a box to tick. This guide gives us some really practical examples like Maya and Jebron. Can you walk us through those? Of course. So Maya, she really struggled with attention, but she found that listening to recordings of the text alongside traditional reading materials really helped her focus and get more involved. That's remarkable. And what about Jebron? Jebron had physical limitations that made it tough for him to work with traditional learning materials. But when he started using digital text and text-to-speech software, it was a game changer. He was able to engage with the material on his own terms with more confidence. It's about empowerment. And speaking of resources, this guide is packed with them. One that caught my eye was OTAP. What can you tell us about that? OTAP, pronounced OTAP, stands for the Oregon Technology Access Program. They are amazing. OTAP offers a ton of resources and support focused on using technology to help students with disabilities. They're actually the ones who created this awesome guide. They're really a one-stop shop for anything AEM related. And they have a whole website, right? It's like a goldmine of information. This guide also mentioned other resources like Bookshare and the National AEM Center. 
Oh, yeah, for sure. And you know what's really cool about AEM? It's bigger than just changing the way things look. It's like a whole new way of thinking about education, making sure everyone's included right from the start. You're so right. It's about building accessibility in from day one instead of trying to force it in later. Exactly. So thinking practically for the educators listening in who might be feeling inspired to actually use AEM in their classrooms, where would you suggest they even begin? Well, based on what we've explored today, connecting with OTP seems like a great first step. They offer so much information, training, and support. Visiting their website, going to workshops, or even just giving them a call can make a huge difference. Couldn't agree more. They're incredibly well-equipped to help teachers navigate the world of AEM and make it real for their students. And we can't forget those other fantastic resources you mentioned, Bookshare and the National AEM Center. Absolutely. Those would be incredibly valuable to check out. Bookshare is a fantastic source for accessible books and materials, and the National ADM Center is a treasure trove of research best practices and a ton of information. It's inspiring to see such a strong network of support for educators who are passionate about making learning accessible for everyone. It really shows how we're moving towards a more inclusive approach to education as a whole. It's not just about keeping up with the times. It's about fundamentally changing how we think about teaching and learning. It's about recognizing and valuing the different ways each student learns. AEM isn't about making things equal, it's about unlocking the potential within every child. I love that. It's about empowering every student to learn and thrive. Speaking of empowering students, I want to circle back to those real life examples from the guide Maya and Gibran. Their stories are such powerful examples of the impact of AEM. They really are. Maya's story shows how important it is to find the right format for each student. She was struggling with focus, but listening to audio recordings of the text while she read made all the difference. She could finally concentrate and engage with what she was learning. It's amazing how something so simple can be a game changer. And what about Gibran's story? Gibran's story really highlights how AEM can give students independence. Traditional learning materials were a real challenge for him because of his physical limitations. But when he started using digital text and text-to-speech software, it opened up a whole new world. He could finally learn on his own terms and feel confident doing it. It's not just about overcoming challenges. It's about giving students the tools they need to take charge of their own learning. Precisely. And it all starts with awareness. Understanding what AEM is, why it matters, and where to find the help and resources to make it a reality. That's where OTAP, the Oregon Department of Education's website, and all the other amazing resources we've talked about come in. They're invaluable tools for any educator who's ready to embrace AEM and make a real difference. It feels like we've only scratched the surface. There's so much more to explore. We have, but by taking that first step, diving into these resources and having these conversations, we're planting the seeds for a more inclusive and equitable learning experience for every student. What an incredible thought to leave us with. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining me on this deep dive into the world of AEM. It's been truly eye-opening. The pleasure was all mine. It's incredible how such a simple shift in thinking can open up so many possibilities for students who learn differently. It really is. And the most exciting part is we're only just scratching the surface. Absolutely. So for our listeners who are fired up and ready to put all of this into practice, what would you say is the most important thing to remember about AEM? You know, I think the biggest takeaway here is that AEM isn't about checking boxes or following rules just because we have to. It's about doing what's right for our students. Exactly. It's about really embracing inclusivity and equity in education. It's about recognizing that potential exists in every student. And our job is to give them the tools and support to unlock it. It's about moving away from that one size fits all mentality and really focusing on what works best for each individual. Yes. And what works best might be different for every student. For one student, it might be digital text with text-to-speech. For another, it might be incorporating tactile graphics or hands-on activities. There's no single magic solution. Right, and that's why that collaborative approach is so important, working closely with the student, their family, and other educators. Absolutely. And that's where those amazing resources like OTAP come into play. They provide the guidance and support that educators need to really champion AEM in their own schools and classrooms. They're a game changer for sure. So consider this your official invitation to explore the world of AEM and discover how you can make a real impact on your students' lives. Thanks for joining us on this incredible journey of learning and discovery. Until next time. It's been a pleasure.